Hello everybody, how are you? How are we doing today? So today we're talking about how to stop hating your body. This is principle number eight of intuitive eating. I've gone through all of the other principles up to number eight so far. So today we're going to talk about principle number eight of intuitive eating and that is how to respect your body, okay? So despite what you may think, Body respect doesn't mean that you absolutely have to just love your body, but a lot of women that I work with, they find this really challenging. They have like a really challenging relationship with their bodies, you know, really to say the least, because they have this negative self-talk going on about their bodies and they just criticize themselves for every little fault they see in the mirror and they just pick themselves apart. Can you relate to this? Is this something that is ringing a bell for you? Are you resonating? I, I will raise my hand. I, I do this. I still do it. I, I, I'm not, not nearly as much. I'm learning through intuitive eating to love my body so much more. And you know, we have to remember our bodies are a gift from God. We have to respect our bodies. We have to treat them kindly. Remember to be kind to yourself and treat yourself with, you know, be. Be um, respectful and just be patient with yourself as well. So if you're coming on, please say hello so I know you're here. And if you catch the replay, hashtag replay so I know you're here as well. And if you have any questions for me at all as we go along, please pop them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer those for you. So what does it mean to really respect your body? Well, from intuitive eating, um, the third edition by Trebol and Resch, respecting your body means treating your body with dignity and meeting its basic needs, okay? So what that actually means is that, you know, you are giving your body the absolute, just everything that it, it, it needs to really to live and to survive, okay? Like comfort and nourishment and rest, things like that. So. It also means, you know, we have to come to terms with the body that we were born with, okay? And I know that could be really hard for some of us, but we all have, we all have different genes, right? We have different genes that make some of us taller, some of us shorter, and, you know, some a little, um, some a little um, bigger, some a little smaller, some, some are blue-eyed, some are brown-eyed. You know, we're all so different. There's such a wide diversity of us in this world. And that's what makes our world so interesting. Hi, Brenda, how are you? So, you know, and you don't wanna think like it's time that, you know, we need to stop trying to like fit this perfect little mold that we think that we should look like, okay? So our culture, if you think about it, our culture has this ideal image that is really unattainable for a lot of us. And then society on top of that is telling us that we should be disappointed or unhappy with our bodies. So it can get really confusing. So think about it, like, are you someone who has just hated your body since you were maybe like a teenager, since you were really young? And what, and, and what has happened for you with that? Like, what has been your outcome? You know, think about those kinds of things, like along the way in your journey, like, do you love your body now? Do you participate in activities that's going to make your body feel better? Or like many of us women do, you know, are you trying to like exercise excessively just to compensate for the food that you ate? And, um, you know, especially like even if you're totally exhausted, you're like, oh, I, I got exercise, you know, because I ate a little too much today or I had or I'm going to have something a little, a little extra later. Um, so I better exercise and get some um, extra um, movement in. A lot of us do that and that and by doing that that's using exercise as punishment and we never want to use exercise as punishment exercise or any kind of movement it should be enjoyable to us okay hi Stephanie how are you hi Billy so with that being said you know like think about it like are you someone who's also maybe right now like on some kind of eating plan where you're just you're just feeling hungry all the time and you're not even feeling satisfied with the actual food that you're eating. Remember, satisfaction is one of our principles and you want to feel satisfied when you're eating because if you're not satisfied, then you're still gonna feel like you still need something, like you were missing something. You're still gonna kinda wanna pick and graze, right? So, and then when you um, do end up, like say, alternating between like these restrictive eating 
um, behaviors and these binges, that's what happens. You go back and forth. You like you're really res you're restricting yourself, and eventually you get to your point. And you're just like, ah, oh, I just want what I want, and you're just gonna go have it, right? So you might be thinking, you know, how do I start working on respecting my body? Well, I feel like when most of us think about body respect, our minds tend to kind of go to like the physical aspects of it, which can really kind of be a turnoff. So if you have been maybe hating your body for, you know, since you were pretty young maybe, the thought of like just all of a sudden just loving your body can almost seem like, like oh wow, like that's really cool, like almost like magic, right? But it can be like really overwhelming as well if you've just lived your life picking yourself apart. So the actual definition of respect is to admire someone or something like really deeply and as a result of their abilities, qualities, or achievements. Okay, that's the actual definition of respect. But I wanna go a little deeper with that definition and using the definition in terms of our bodies, our body respect focuses more on like what your body can and can't do, okay? Rather than what, what it actually looks like. So that's like, that's a whole lot more than just a size, right? So do you have, do you, are you someone who, you have that voice in your head? I feel like we all have that voice in our head. We all have that self-talk and you might hear that voice screaming, you know, I can't accept my body or, you know, something along those lines. You know, let, let me know, like, are, are you someone, are you feeling or hearing that self-talk and is it, is it often or is it just once in a while? Um, and how do you feel about that? And how do you combat that? Like, are you fighting back and forth? Like, you know, like the devil and the angel on your head? Are you kind of arguing with yourself in your head sometimes? Or is it just all negative? Or is there some positive in there too? I'd like to know. Because sometimes, you know, when we kind of self-loathe, you know, it can be, sometimes we do it too much and then that could prevent you from actually working on learning to respect your body. So, what can you learn from your past experiences with your body image? Well, if you think about it, like before we talk about the actual how, I want you to think about your past experiences a little bit here. So take a moment and think about your past experiences and did you get the results that you wanted from them? Think about that for a moment. You know, now typically you'd spend, you know, just a few minutes thinking about this and re reflecting on your own body. So think about like where you are now and then think about where you can start moving forward to. Hi Renee, how are you? So like think about, these are some questions you could ask yourself, like how has your, your current and your past thinking, how has that served you? Like think about how do you think now and how do you think in the past? Is it different now from how you were thinking about yourself in the past? And if it's not, if, it's, if it was negative in the past, if it's still negative now, like what can you do about that? Think about that for a moment. Hi, Christy, how are you? So, um, you know, has it made you respect your body more or less now? You know, if you're like, you know, this, this wide majority of, of people who just, um, especially people who I've worked with, your self-talk and your thoughts have made you respect your body less. This is what's happened with a lot of the people that I've worked with. And so something I wanna ask you, something I really want you to think about, if your past behavior has worsened your body respect, then why are you hesitant to try something different? Right, if you want different results, you know you have to do something different, right? Makes sense, it's just totally obvious. So what are you afraid that might happen if you actually did something different? So I want you to think about that. And if you have any questions for me, please let me know, pop it in the comments. But today it's all about learning to respect your body, get rid of that negative self-talk. We all have those voices in our head and we look at ourselves in the mirror and sometimes we're not so nice to ourselves. We know it, we know it's true, we all do it. I do it myself. And, you know, becoming at peace with food and at peace with yourself, you need to be kind to yourself and you need to be respectful to yourself and to your body. And you need to just be patient with yourself as well and know that whatever goals you set, you will get there as long as you just continue to be consistent with them instead of, 
being so negative and kind of, um, you know, that negative talk is only going to set you back. It's not going to be motivating for you. So if you're kind to yourself, then you're going to be, it's going to be much more motivating and it's going to help you continue on that path towards your goals. So let me know, again, if you have any questions, pop it in the comments for me. And if you have any other questions too, maybe like about your health or your own weight experiences that you'd like to talk a little deeper on, feel free to reach out. I'm here. But I hope you all have a very beautiful day and I will be talking to you soon. Bye guys.